Hi, this is Juniva, 3D artist and illustrator. Continuing from the last video, which is modeling part, this video will be covered with coloring, shading, lighting, and rendering for creating this 3D character in Nomad Sculpt. Now let's dive in. If you like this video, please thumbs up and subscribe for more tutorials. All the settings we have currently is for the modeling. Now let's switch the setting for shading and lighting friendly. Let me hide the background first. Now you can see the character with the matte cap shader applied. It is because we worked on modeling in part 1 and 2. Matte cap, which stands for material capture, handles lighting and material information. However, the roughness and metalness channel don't function with the matte cap. Additionally, when you apply color to it, the color tends to be multiplied, so white color won't be visible when you're using matte cap. Now I'm switching the shading from matte cap to lit PBR. So since we are applying some colors to this character, it is better to use PBR, physically based rendering. Before we get into the coloring, let's set up the basic lightings. There are two ways to add lightings in Nomad. And we can use environment lighting and create lightings manually uh, one by one. Environment lighting is easy to obtain general lighting. Nomad offers some default environment lighting maps. And I'm choosing this warm indoor lighting map. Then I can adjust the exposure to around 0.5. And on top of this, I'm manually creating my own key light. And I'm setting the intensity to about 1.26. When we close up, you can notice some polygon shapes on the surface on the body object. It needs some more resolution to the body to make sure to select the body object first. Open the multi-resolution window from the top left and apply subdivide a couple of times. You will notice that the surface becomes smoother. This improves the quality of the render by increasing the resolution significantly. This gives a better render result when painting on the surface as well. Select the body and open the stroke paint window to choose the color for the body. I'm choosing dark brown color for the body as the reference image. And then maybe increase the saturation a bit. And then go to the layer icon on the top right. Let's add a layer while the body object is still selected. I'm using multiple layers for coloring on the same body object. I'm naming the current layer as body and the new layer as face. I'm selecting the mask tool from the right slide menu bar. Just make sure we are on the face layer in the body layer window. I'm painting the mask including the area of both eyes mouth, beak, and half of the bangs as shown in the reference image. Symmetry button on, so it is easy to paint the both sides at the same time. Now I'm fixing the mask area using the unmask tool, which works like an eraser. It looks like a raccoon, and it is actually a good idea to make raccoon variation later, I think. Let's invert the mask. I'm selecting a paint tool, and I'm choosing a cream color with maximum roughness. And painting the color on the face area. Now you will see the paint is applying on the surface with no shininess because we set the roughness to 1 which means max roughness and it means matte on surface. Now we go to the face layer in the layer window. The painting was applied to only the face layer, not affecting the color and roughness of, of the body object. You can also adjust the opacity of the layer by sliding this yellow bar. Now it is moving on the big. I am selecting the big object and I am choosing a yellow color from the palette. Set the roughness about half, which is 0.5. Apply the same color to the both upper and lower beaks. I'll apply the same color on the nose at this time for color blocking, but I might change it later. 
Next, I'm selecting the feet. I prefer them in yellow too, but I'll adjust the yellow to be a bit brighter, with less roughness. And now I'm moving on hair bangs. It is better make them similar in the brighter yellow and a bit lighter and desaturated because I want each part go along with the body with a warmer color tone. I'm adding full roughness on these hair bangs. For whiskers, I'm using the same color and roughness as the hair bangs for consistency. I assign different level of roughness to each body part. It is to help to create more visual interesting level of details. Let's now select the body object and we are going to open the layer window. I'm adding a new layer named as chicks. Now it is a fun part that we are adding cute little chicks for this guy. I'm using the paint tool to create the chicks on the object and selecting pink or the red colors. Make sure that we are on the chick layer and I'm painting chicks on the face. The paint went over the face line, so let me undo this. I think it is better to do it with smaller brush this time. I guess it looks too light now. I'm going for a little darker and more vivid. Now it looks better, maybe the pink is too strong. If the red is too intense, this time I can go back to the layer and adjust it by mixing it with the cream color. And now let's add some color on the ground. I'm choosing a green color with a warm touch of yellow. It's similar to the reference image but less because some of the warm color is from the lighting. I think it is better to add a little bit of a shininess to the ground. Now for the background object, I'm using similar green color as the ground because they are just the stage props for the character. I want this character is more pop-up rather than props. And let's move on to the sky. Click the picture icon to open the window and switch from environment to color so we can add colors to the background. I'm adding the blue color to match the reference image. It doesn't need to be exactly the same color. I don't want to say coloring and shading are done, but because often this process involves a bit back and forth. I think the overall colors looks good as a base. When we set the final lighting, we might revisit them later. It was a coloring and shading. Now let's have some fun lighting time. Let's click sunlight icon to open a lighting window. Now I am adding a new light. This will be a light source coming from the left side and slightly from behind of the character. I am changing the sunlight to a spotlight which has a quan angle. Now I am setting up the position of the light with gizmo. It is easy to change the direction by moving this green dot around. The shadow moves in the opposite direction of the light source. So by adjusting the lighting to face the character and see where the shadow falls. In this way, I can position the light exactly as I want it. I found that in Nomad, the moving the light source can be slipped very easily. So I usually plan first the where I want to put the lights and then position the lights slowly but no hesitate and I'm increasing the intensity of the light. Using the blue dot, it is easy to control the sharpness of the transition from the light, depending on your artistic and lighting preferences. It is a great feature to have when fine-tuning the lighting in your 3D scene. Now the shadow appears somewhat sharp, so let's navigate to the additional option window. I control the softness of the shadow here by checking this on. I think it is better to put the background object a little further behind because I want the character is more pop-up than the background object. Now it is a good time to save this file. I will save this as the next version since I would like to keep the previous one as well.
I'm going back to the lighting window. I think the edge of the spotlight is too sharp and increasing the softness just a little bit. I'm going to add another light here and naming it as backlight. This is not necessarily, it is optional because it will be very soft light for the background object. I'm switching it from sunlight to spotlight because it is more easy to control the light area with the cone angle. I am bringing this backlight to face the cube and the torso. And now I'm opening the sun icon for the lighting window and going to the environment lighting option down here. There are some default environment maps provided from Nomad here and with indoor and outdoor lighting. It is totally fine to use default maps too. These environment light maps are good and it also contains numerous light sources and heavy colors in it, which means my character will be affected by this light and colors. So this time, I would like to use my own environment map which has simple light sources and no color. It won't be too distracted from the multiple light sources, only from my own lights I've created. Especially this kind of simple characters. When I apply this simple environment map, it provides very simple surface reflection. This makes the surface less distracting. I can design the specular shape on the object surface. If you want to use this environment map I created, then follow the link down below. I will put it up on my Gumroad account so you can download it. Since my environment lighting has been changed, I am increased the intensity of rim lighting. I am adding a little bit of colors in the light to create warmer in atmosphere. Because my map is black and white, simple studio environment lighting, no colors in environment map, which means it is easy to control my own colors. If you are using the previous warm lighting map, you can skip this part. Don't need to add more yellow color on the lighting because the firm experience, if you use similar warmer color in lighting shading in different ways, it becomes hard to control and debug the image later. Now main lighting is done. Now let's revisit some colors here. I think the body color needs to be darker in value. Before we apply the color, select the body object first and make sure you are on the body layer. Since we created three different layers on the body object, I'm choosing the dark color and applying on the body layer. Finally, we are the post-processing stage. This is the final step to complete this character. We are almost there. In the post-processing window, I'm turning off everything except quality control options because it is easy to debug and save some memories on my iPad. It is just my personal preferences on shading, rendering process on my iPad. I just leave some options like quality and resolutions, reflection and global illumination, anti-aliasing, dethering, and the post-process, which are image quality control the rather than additional effects and I'm opening the material window and switching to subsurface from opaque and global illumination supports the subsurface material making the surface looks more organic and pretty, I would say, alive. It creates a scatter effect similar to what we often see on leaves and ears or hands when light passes through organic object. And we can have more subsurface options down here. We can control the translucent and depth of the object. As you can see, the ears they have become a brighter pink color in response to the rim light on the character. You can change the values of depth and and translucency with these sliders. I'm selecting the bigs now. I checked soft surface on the material window and they're reducing the depth and translucency values. I do the same process on fit, whiskers and bangs as well.
I changed the values of depth and translucency on the body too. And about whiskers, they are thin and small, so I reduced the depth. Now let's go back to the post-process window to use other options for now. I'm turning on the ambient occlusion options here. This adds a realistic touch with contact shadows. It calculates the distance between the object. You can add those contact shadows by sliding these yellow bars, the how much and how strength you want to keep them on. Now, we need the depth of field, of course. It works great because we have some background of cube and a torso. When we use this effect, this character will appear sharper compared to the background images. And of course, it looks more interesting and it gives three-dimensional effect. And here I'm using color grading, which is more like CG in Photoshop. If you want to make this image more contrasted and control the overall brightness, this is a great to use, especially if you don't want to go back to the lighting setup just to fix the overall brightness and contrast. Grain adds small noise effect to break up the overall perfect CG appearance, giving the image a more natural look. So let's turn it on grain and sharp. So I use the grain and sharpness pretty much every time I render in Nomad. And now we are going to go to the camera option by clicking on this small camera icon. And I'm switching from orthographic to perspective view because we are going to render for the final image. Now we are preparing to render with camera view. Before we set the camera view, I am positioning the character in the view frame. By clicking this button and create a new camera, I named this as main cam. So this current view has been saved in the main cam as we created a new cam. Let's check overall colors and shading. I think the body appears too bright with excessive scattering effects. Let me reduce the scatter which is subsurface effect. When we use subsurface, it is more prettier and a glowing effect. If that is too much, the surface color might look washed out and blurry because of the light. So it is important to find the balance. Now you can observe that the colors and the shadowing look slightly darker and more vibrant. I have one more finer touch to add here. I want to add one sphere as catch light effect in the eyes. This is artificial and fake. It works pretty good without setting up actual lighting in Nomad. Just with this catch light, my character looks more smart and cute a lot more. I am creating a sphere and resize it really small and putting this in the black part of the eyeball and I am naming this as highlight. Now duplicate this for the other side and naming this one too and position this one on the other side of the eye. I change the perspective view to find a better angle and position it within the black part, ensuring it is not floating. Before rendering now, it is a quick check if the overall color is shading and lighting look good. I think the nose color would be better slightly darker compared to the beak. And let's tweak the subsurface scatter effect as well. Now I think this character looks solid, and before rendering, there are two things I usually do, which is setting the camera view and saving the file. 
Go to the camera window and click the main cam to bring the main cam we saved earlier and then save or update this file before rendering. It is very important to do this because if the rendering is corrupted, the application might be crashed. So it's better to save and go to the project file icon to open the project window and then navigate down to find the render options. I usually select square which is normally used for social media platforms like Instagram. Instagram. This will export the image with PNG file format and then click export PNG. Now it is rendering. The image has been created but it hasn't been saved yet. Now we can do some fun stuff. If you go to the nomad icon, the left top corner here, this additional menu will pop up. I simply select the 0, 0, and then click this square icon to create a turntable render of this character. Then we can see this little guy is turning. I can close up this using my fingers and see these guys in 360 degrees interactively. Unfortunately, it won't be recorded, but you can record using screen recording function on your tablet. Oh, I just realized that the reference image is still on the back. I'm clicking the picture icon to open background menu and then turning off the image. And go to the camera menu window to get back to the main camera view we saved earlier. I will render a still image again without reference image this time. And now I'm saving this image to my iPad and saving and updating this file again. Finally, we went over most of the basic tools from modeling to rendering while creating this little character. I'm confident that this work process will be able to create any characters in Nomad with the knowledge knowledge and skills through this video. If you are relatively new to work in 3D space using Nomad, you might feel overwhelmed and lost at first time. I completely understand because I've been in the same position exactly like that. That's why I created this video for those of you who may be feeling lost in Nomad. So if you follow this step I showed here, slowly but surely you will improve significantly every time you practice. I hope this video is helpful to you. If you have any questions about the work process or how you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more tutorials. And I'll see you in the next one. And thanks for watching.